This is Share Radio Investment Perspectives with me, Ed Mitchell. Now, there is an endless torrent of business and financial information and data washing over investors, managers and market participants. It is possible to drown, but with some new tools and methods, it is also possible to swim and profit. This is especially true in terms of predictive analysis. With me now in the studio is Lars Hamburg, Portfolio Manager at Activa Fonda Asset Management of Sweden. Lars, thanks very much for uh, spending your time with us on Share Radio. Thank you. Thank you for having me out. Uh, predictive analysis. Just tell us a bit about that, using big data. Yes, predictions. I mean, it's, it sounds a bit fun. It, could, uh, it leads the thought to crystal balls and uh, um, star formations, things like that, sunspots. But uh, <laughs> it all has to do with statistical predictions, just um, accumulating a lot of history and uh, trying to statistically predict the probability for, mm. uh, let's say, the direction of a risk asset. Much like, you know, when you do uh, weather predictions, the more data and the more granular the data is, the more history you have, the more precise it gets. Exactly. Very good to draw that comparison, actually, because weather forecasting, and as you know, in England, we're obsessed with it. Um, <laughs> the weather forecasting has improved enormously because of the uh, the amount of input that goes in and the yeah. power of the computers. Exactly. Now, you're saying that maybe that could be used in terms of uh, saying where you should put your money. Yes, definitely. I mean that. Uh, I mean that is already ongoing. I would say that uh, a lot of the larger um, quant-oriented hedge funds in the world are uh, devoting assets into this field mm -hmm. for natural reasons. I mean, the, there have been great technological advances over the last, uh, say, ten, fifteen years. Not only, not only thanks to. Uh, new methods of computing, but also interest from many levels, mm. not at least after 9-11. The, you know, you've heard about Edward Snowden Indeed, and uh, yes. all of that. You want, to, you want to listen to vast amounts of data in order to understand what is going on. Yeah. And we're talking about, you know, amounts of data beyond uh, human cognition. Yes, uh, and and it's raw data, isn't it? It's not necessarily data that is directly relevant to investing. It's raw uh, human behavior data. Exactly. I mean, typically people talk about sentiment uh, analysis. And uh, what you do here is basically try to, to gauge the sentiment or the emotion or the attitude toward any given concept uh, out there. And... Uh, if you take you know, concept-based um, sentiment, what is a concept? A concept could be the concept of emerging markets. It, it is not the same as a um, list of keywords that has to do with emerging markets. It's the whole mm. concept. And how do you capture that? Um, then you come into things like advanced language technology, um, the meaning of words, and more you know, philosophical things like that. And, well, there have been great advances. I mean, I don't know if you heard about... IBM's Watson debater and so on, but we're talking about new methods of computing that are more sort of, they are, let's call them uh, neurologically plausible in their approach. Mm -hmm. So they try actually, t it's about teaching computers to read and understand on uh, sort of more human-like um, manner. Yes, yes. So it can analyze for, say, uh, certain emotions like confidence. That if you exactly. if you became aware of confidence in a region or in a sector or in a country, that would be an indicator, perhaps that that you could move in and invest. But or, I, I put it rather crudely. But, yeah, um, exactly. Or I mean, or vice versa. I mean, uh, you know that we all we've all heard that uh, uh, the markets uh, they don't like um, uncertainty. It's something that we have been. You know, it's rather intuitive, but. Uh, as we go along, we collect uh, true evidence for that. Mm. We see that if we can measure, for instance, normalized worry or skepticism around, uh, let's say, a market or uh, around uh, the Fed as a concept, um, that may or may not tell us something. And we accumulate enough of that data over a long time. Then we can start and correlate that or actually analyze that against price data. And uh, it's based on the same principles as in traditional signal intelligence, mm -hmm. i.e. statistical analysis and pattern recognition. And then 
co coupled with newer methods called cognitive computing and you know, semantic memory models and so on. So I'll give you an example here. Mm -hmm. If I, if I uh, sentiment analysis and text analysis has been around for a long time mm -hmm. already, and there have been Twitter funds, you know, that uh, look at positive and negative keywords and so on. But uh, that was then. Since then, things have evolved. And in order to make a computer understand language, it requires that it has to uh, put every little word in every utterance in some co some sort of context. Mm -hmm. If I say to you, that's a bad shirt, Ed, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that your shirt is bad, like an inflation number is bad. It means that your shirt is awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's more, oh, yes, it's more positive, mean, yes. yeah? Yeah, and you're um, right to put it the, that way around. Exactly, yes. and you do the same thing with code words and all kinds of expressions of uh, attitude, and you do that on this enormous scale mm. of um, uh, vast amounts of streaming, unstructured language data. And hopefully you will find these patterns that have some kind of statistically predictive power. And then with the right algorithm, could you then use that enormous power, uh, possibly of predi predictivity, uh, predictiveness, sorry, English isn't my first language, <laughs> uh, to actually choose um, the, uh, the formation of a portfolio? Could it actually be that with that amount of uh, background information that the computer itself could select or at least guide the choice in the formation of uh, what goes into a fund? Yeah, yes, I mean, uh, I think it's, uh, it's already being done at some levels. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you already have a raft of uh, predictive, uh, you know, so-called predictive uh, models based on the big data analytics that suggest whether you should be, you know, whether models suggest whether you should be long or short uh, certain assets. And um, I mean, there are several, several of these um, in public display on the, on the web. There is, <coughs> there is one, we have one where we just publish the result from different models. I mean, we don't use them in, we just, uh, just for, we call it a public perspective study. We just put them out for display to mm -hmm. see which ones have predictive powers and not. And we let them run. One is uh, called What is Monitor. So what is Monitor dot com. Everyone can go in there and look at this and follow these uh, live predictions and see how they play out. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, this sort of uh, direction that things are going in will suit the younger generation. Uh, the older generation of uh, investors perhaps liked, I think you've described them as the sort of oak paneled rooms and the the good lunches and so on. This is the, the, the cheaper way forward for the tech-savvy younger generation. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you look at the younger generation, they have uh, it's easier for them or it's more natural for them to go on the web, for instance, to search mm. for information. And they're used to comparing prices. They find something that they like and they go out and they, they listen to what uh, others are saying. This is already prevalent in what is called uh, the, so the sphere of social investing. We hear what are your peers typically investing in, etc. But let's say now that you have a new type of asset managers that come in and actually use uh, predict predictive analytics, and they actually create this so-called alpha in their portfolios. Mm. And uh, I think uh, that will that will easily easily uh, catch on among the younger generation. They're much more sort of um, I've said price and quality oriented, and they have you know, it's easy for them to orient themselves in this. Uh, 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 jungle of investment uh, services. It's not necessarily the case that a lot of these uh, older big name um, uh, wealth managers uh, mean very much to this younger generation, mm. to put it a bit crudely. In the last few minutes that we've got, just uh, tell us a, a bit about Activa Fonda Asset Management. Uh, what sort of strategy do you use? Do you use some of the things that you've been talking about? Uh, unfortunately, not. I mean, we we mention we we manage pension money, uh, mm -hmm. and um, this is uh, so far a bit too much of a black box. Um, so we have been experimenting with this and been following different kind of models for uh, more for fun, mm -hmm. maybe for future use in one form or other. But the money that we manage uh, the come mostly from the Swedish premium pension system. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, all the investors they have gone through this suitability process and so on so it's uh, it's not uh, necessarily the case that we can directly implement this kind of big data predictive uh, analytics model we could start doing that marginally in due course and i think uh, that is uh, that may be in the cards mm. But what is at the heart of your strategy at Activa Fonda? No, it's global global multi asset. It's purely mm-hmm. risk based, and uh, we uh, we adhere to sort of the the um, the ancient principles of um, reasonable diversification mm-hmm. across asset classes. Uh, this is a weird world that we live in yes. uh, of widespread negative interest rates. Um, I'm just wondering, what do pension funds do to 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 get the right uh, spread of investments to, to match their commitments some years down the line. That's the problem, you know, that uh, in order to, to, I mean, if I speak generally in the industry, I mean, the, I think the trend is that uh, when, you, when you see uh, people take a massively higher risk for, uh, for a um, quite small increase in return, mm. that's, that's probably the big dilemma that we had over the last couple of years when we see just uh, interest rates uh, uh, collapsing. Yes, Um, and very soon there are going to be huge stresses and strains when the Americans decide to edge their rates up. That will really um, (coughs) sort the men from the boys. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, it it could be very dramatic, or it could be like um, another, you know, like the the, uh, the first uh, taper scare when nothing happened, or the you know the Y two K or whatever. Yes. You know, we, we all prepared for a disaster, <laughs> and uh, yeah. at the end of the day, not much happens. I mean, who whoever can predict that will definitely be the winner. You know? Yes, indeed. Uh, Lars, a uh, pleasure having you with us here on Share Radio. Thank you for joining us. That was Lars Hamburg, Portfolio Manager at Activa Fonda Asset Management of Sweden. Thanks very much.